Hey everyone, today I want to show you an extremely simple, a very very popular and versatile bass that you can hear all over in classical and also more modern music. That's a great way to have fun improvising. So importantly, it's really a bass line and um, th this bass is really a great way to practice melodies, but it's also great to just start improvising and getting your feet wet while removing a lot of complexity uh, related to harmony, related to what you should do, in which, in which structure should you fit your improvisation. So it's really a great way to work on, on difficult parts of improvisation, which is just improvising, right? So first, let me describe what it is, very simply. Then we'll go through some examples in, in music, just to show you that it's not something that's for children. <laughs> it's, I mean, children can play and have a lot of fun with it too but it's really something that's used all over the place in music. And then we'll show, we'll, I'll try to show what, what you can do with it in improvisation. So the bass line is extremely simple. Indeed, it is a walk from tonic to, or down to the dominant. So let's, let's quickly set ourselves in C minor. If we are in C minor, and in C minor, the tonic of course is C and the dominant is, is G. And so if you walk from the tonic to the dominant, you go from C, here, down to G. You can execute it in, in many ways, but you will hear it as simply a descent from the tonic down to the dominant. And once you're on the, in, on the dominant, you go back to the tonic, which does a cadenza for you. So this is, again, it's known as, it's used in chacons or in, in, um, in passacais, passacais in, in French, or passacarias in, in Italian. So it, it's really used all, all, all over the place. So before I make a fool of myself trying to show you that it's a good bass, let me give you some real examples of, of music. So maybe one of the most well-known pieces that uses this is a chacon by, by Buxtehude. So it's really, it's really very beautiful, and I will just, excuse me for my bad sight reading there, but just to give you what the piece is, it's, it's... and so on and so on. But here you see the interesting thing. It's an organ piece, so this is why I'm uncomfortable trying to play the bass, because the bass is very important. Normally you would do it with your, with your feet, but as poor pianists, we have to yours, use our little fingers. And so here the bass line is this. E. Uh, sorry. which is a slightly different execution than when I started uh, at the beginning. I, I did something chromatic, right, like this. But Buxtehude does something like this. So if I shift it again in, in C, it's... What he does is he goes like this with thirds but again it's exactly the same principle uh, by the way i did this in minor you can also hear um, this in major so this this kind of, of bass line it's rarer in my opinion and just to make this remark now you have pasakais and chacons, and everyone is fighting as to how do you define what a pasakai is and how do you define what a chacon is. Some people say that some are if you have the harmonic uh, patterns that are fixed, and some say if you have uh, harmony, it's a pasakai, and if you have just a bass line, it's a chacon. Some people say it's the other way around. Some people say one is in major and one is in minor. In my opinion, what happens is that one is a French name, the Chacon, and the other is uh, Spanish. And so, of course, people have different languages and so they have different names. But at, at its core, in my opinion, the best difference that I can give you is the mood. A Chacon is typically a bit sadder, a bit more melancholic, whereas a Pasaca is a bit more proud. It has this, this kind of uh, 
more fandango, more, more Spanish pride uh, kind of feel to it. Now, um, so a very famous Pasakai is the one by Bach, right? And here you see you also have a bass line, but it's not the same one. We won't talk about this right now. But again, it's, it finishes with a big cadenza. Right. Another very famous and beautiful example of a chaconne is this piece by, by Bach. Here the Brahms transcription, because it comes from the D minor violin partita, and as you can see, this is a piano. So the piece goes like this, uh, just to remind you. continues. Uh, but okay, you might complain here and say, but okay, I, I hear a lot of a harmony and a harmonic structure that is then repeated through the piece, but I do not hear this bass that you are mentioning, which goes which goes from the tonic to the dominant. Right? And yes, it's not at the start, but it comes just a few measures later if you look at this this part in the score. Um, oh sorry. If you look at the middle finger, and so on. And so it comes and goes, but it's a very, very useful part in the music because it really allows you to sing this, this beautiful melody while having a very simple but powerful accompaniment in the, in the left hand. And so you see Bach does D, he goes down chromatically like this, and then arrives on the, on the A here, which is the dominant, and then goes back up with this little phrase to go back up to the to the tonic. So that's the second example. Now I want to give you a third example which is also useful to notice. This time it's a keyboard partita, namely the second one, and it highlights a, an interesting property of this bass. So the, the, the piece begins with this French ouverture. And, and just after a few measures, you, you transition into this beautiful. But so it's, it's absolutely beautiful because you have this singing, very single and, and lyrical voice, which says a lot. And then you have this very simple accompaniment, like, like a bit, you know, cat paws, very light. <laughs> very, but, but this accompaniment, so this is, this is uh, a bit like a continuo, what, what a harpsichord would do. But what I'm saying is that this is here, it, you know, it, it's, it's a bit automatically generated. You can do this in improvisation. And namely this, this bass, which I showed you before, the one that goes down in steps, is very useful for this kind of stuff, this kind of music where you have a very lyrical right hand and, and the left hand just does a bass which just doesn't have too much, you know, like big chords. <laughs> 
because big chords are great, but then you can't hear anything if you have a beautiful melody in the right hand. So just to show you this experiment here, the, the reason I showed you this, because this does not have the, the chromatic descent, but the reason is that you could put the chromatic descent and it would sound okay in this piece. Just, just, just to test. So rem remember, the thing does. Okay, and if we switch the bass and we do. Okay, here I have to switch because. <laughs> I can't do this. But you see, for the first two measures, apart from some uncanniness in the second thing, it, it sort of retains its, its, uh, its, its audio quality in the sense that it retains the, the way it feels. It's a great exercise to try to improvise such pieces of music. Okay, and as a last example, just to show you that some of the most beautiful pieces of music are built on this extremely simple bass, I will just give you an example from Purcell um, as a challenge. If you know what it is, you know, write it in the comments. But if you don't, I'll answer it gladly because it's, it's so, so beautiful. And so I will I'll change normally you have chords, but I will just do the space to show you that it fits in the pattern. And it, it goes like this. So. modifying the music but it's it's you know you have this singing again and and this this bass which just gets out of the way and if you have something like this which is very melodic very lyrical um, it's great to try to improvise on this because doing melodies correctly is one of the hardest things in improvisations um, so it's good to get some practice for this okay enough with the examples now let's let's look at how we can improvise on this so as a recap the bass just goes you know stepwise from tonic to dominant or it goes with a more complicated pattern but it's always a walk from this tonic down to the dominant that's the characteristic okay so to underline is very important it's very important to underline the fact that um, it's not really a cr um, harmonic progression but it's really a bass line to highlight this fact just just let's look at the chromatic version which goes something like this right for instance a bit like what Purcell does and if you would put chords on this it would do something like this for instance So what chords would you have? You have this, maybe you have a sort of weird transition here, but you would have the, 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 the one chord, maybe a five here, right? And something here, this is a three, right? So you add a three and then four, again one, and this is a cadenza. And then you loop back. So you would have something a bit weird. You would have like maybe one, five, three, uh, four, uh, and, and at the end a cadenza. Okay, sure. Now let's just try another way of, of doing this bass. Let's do something like this. What books the hood does. So. And if we would put chords on this, it would maybe sound like this. I did again the chromatic.
automatic version. But you see, if I do this, it's a different progression because, because I chose this bass, now I do this, this chord now. So this is the four, but it's not, it's not the four which has the minor, the minor third, it's the, so it's a weird chord. So you could view it as a chord or you could view it as using a mode. And you can do these, these suspended. to analyze these things it's really stupid if you want to analyze this harmonically because it's not chords it's not chords if you want to analyze these things and you start putting sus 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 all over the place it's very annoying and the reason it's annoying is because it's not made for this because it's not a chord it's just a way of playing on a bass and so you suspend notes because some voices stick and then they unstick so you see I think it's really worth it to consider this just a bass and not a um, harmonic progression because it frees you melodically. And so that's the point I want to make. And so how do you improvise melodically on this? The best tip is to start with one realization so you can pick the chromatic version. Maybe let's start with this one, the, the Buxtehude one. Okay, and so we do this. Okay. And now we're going to do thirds. If you're uninspired in contrapoint, just do thirds, right? Okay, but here we won't do... Maybe the most simple thing would be to do... Just thirds, but... Okay, what do we do here? This sounds horrible because, because of this, but... I could do unison. Okay, but this counterpoint sucks. <laughs> because if you only do... If you only do parallel movement, we're bored. So let's free this melodically and start to sing the, the right. Again, very simple, but maybe let's start to spice it up a little bit. Maybe, again, if you don't know what to play, maybe the best solution is to play nothing. So very useful is to have notes that stick, for instance. Instead of doing... Let's remove notes and do just... Okay. And again, let's stick. Let's stick. Okay, you see? Now we have something. to put all the voices. Again, here I'm just uh, badly, because it's very good, but I'm just badly adding voices. But it's much more important to work on a single good melody on the right hand. So, again, start with simple counterpoint, counter emotion in here. Okay. with riz rhythms sorry maybe we can do something so just starting with simple things and then adding rhythms you don't need to add new melodies just try to play with one melody and see what you can get 
So this is trying to play with rhythms. Uh, this is really simple. I'm just, what I'm doing is starting with essentially regular notes, uh, but okay, they have this, they have this thing, but you could also do this with really regular notes, right? And then you do double. dissonant but you do not care if it's melodic you see it doesn't matter if it's if it's in a melody it won't matter so this is just to increase the, the speed of the rhythm you can play with this you can try to play with increasing the polyphony so for instance this is you you have your one voice of counterpoint right try this is bad because it's all parallel movement and so you see it doesn't sound very good so you will learn by doing this this kind of thing to do maybe So increasing polyphony is good, it's a good exercise if you want to play with counterpoint, but the really, really, again, the main, main point of this is to help with your melodic thinking. And so it's worth it, maybe if you do one thing with this, again, play with your melodies, and typically what you can do is play with the degrees of the scale and the notes, which are and which are not in the scale. Um, in these melodies which sing very much, it's a great practice to try to go to notes which are not usually in the scale. If you want to listen to a piece of music, listen to the Agnus Dei by Bach. You, you, you type in uh, in YouTube, you, you can search Agnus Dei, Andreas Scholl, and you will find this. And it's very beautiful because it has such a melody which goes on unexpected places in the scale. So the way you would work on this is by making lots of mistakes. So you, would, you do something like this. So start with, again, something like this and do something weird and most of the time it will work it will actually work because if you're doing something weird but which fits in your melody it will it will work very well and be interesting so here for instance I'm really I know that I'm C minor and I know that this is not in C minor it's you know <laughs> but I am seeing it and my brain is like, yes, go there. So I'm thinking, okay, let's let's have this end point for the melody and let's just go there, right? So I'm not going to do... Okay, because if I do this, everyone is, is jumping out of their chair saying, oh, this is horrible. But if I'm going there melodically... But you can, so you can really play with this. This is not supposed to be in C minor.
this can be done with all instruments, it can be done with all styles of music also. Typically, I did it with some semi-fake Baroque music, but when you really want to sing your melody, it's a great way to do it. Okay. You see, it's really, really versatile. And now that I've shown you this, I've also cursed you by being able to hear this in all pieces of music that, that do it. So if you want to come back here and complain, I've heard this, this bass in this piece of music, come here and comment this. And if you have any feedback, comments, likes or dislikes or hatred or tomatoes, throw them at me. I'm more than ready and happy to take them. So, cheers.